biggest little city in the world, Reno, Nevada. We are at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. A live telecast coming your way today as the United States takes on the Soviet Union in amateur boxing. Twelve bouts in all. A good, enthusiastic crowd. Seven bouts have been completed, and surprisingly, the United States, coming in as an underdog, has won four of the seven thus far, with five bouts still to come. So we have quite a show for you today. Hello again, everyone. I'm Al Michaels, and this is a series, really, that goes back to 1969, when the United States first met the Soviet Union in dual meet competition, and the Soviets have truly dominated. They have won 26. The United States has won but six times, and one match last year in the Soviet Union, in fact, wound up as a draw. Most people expected the Soviets to run away with this. In fact, a lot of the Soviet fighters you will be seeing today would have been on their Olympic team. As far as the United States team is concerned, it's a whole other story, of course, because of the top 36 amateur boxers in the United States at this time last year, 35 have opted for professional careers, and one other man, Henry Milligan, has gone back to school. So when you say United States team, it's really a very loose term. It's an aggregation of 12 boxers as the United States begins to look ahead now to the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul, Korea. So the U.S. on top 4-3 as we get to the action, ready for the eighth bout now in the competition at the Reno Sparks Convention Center from the Soviet Union. Lernik Papian to take on a heralded Bernard Price of the United States at 112 pounds. This is the flyweight class, and there is Papian. He's only 18 years old, one of the more inexperienced Price. Soviets. They have several fighters in their 20s in Reno today for this competition, and Bernard Price is also 18. He comes out of Muncie, Indiana. He was born in the town of New Madrid, Missouri, near Jefferson City, the state capital. So Bernard Price, who went to the Olympic trials last year and lost in the semifinals, the left-hander ready for action here. There are some in the American camp who feel Bernard Price and James Harris, the light flyweight, who won a decision earlier today, have very good shots at making the 88 Olympic team. It's very difficult, of course, because the Olympics are more than three and a half years away to predict what will happen between now and then. So many things can happen. Uh, some fighters will improve, others will not. A lot of others will leave this program in the interim. But Price is one of those they have very high hopes for. In amateur boxing, all of the scoring must be done with a white portion of the gloves. Three three-minute rounds. The referee does not have a voice in the scoring, and we have an American referee in this particular fight, Carmen Williamson from Toledo. The three judges, one American, one Soviet, and one neutral judge from Mexico, and quite often his determination makes the final decision. The U.S. judge normally has a tendency to vote for the American boxer in a close confrontation. The Soviet judge likewise for his man, so oft-times in amateur boxing in dual meet competition, it's the neutral judge who really determines who wins a decision. U.S. leading after seven bouts, 4-3. And the United States has erased a 3-1 deficit, winning the last three bouts. First round action halfway through. Price is a good counterpuncher. Price has shown a good deal of improvement in the last six months. Remember, just 18 years old. He's been boxing for seven years. Very good hand speed. And those who have worked with him say that uh, six, seven months ago, he might have been a little awed getting into the Olympic trials and the Eastern Olympic trials box-offs, events of that nature. But now he's beginning to mature, both as a person and as a fighter, and he showed it in the national championships at Indianapolis in November. He beat Richard Duran in the finals to win the gold medal. Half a minute now remaining in the first round. Soviet fighter moving very well. Change in 
their styles through the years. They used to be stand-up, straight-ahead type fighters, but uh, over the years showing much more movement since the Montreal Olympic Games. Two men exhibiting similar styles as the first round comes to an end here in Reno, Nevada. <laughs> Okay. I've been on. Let's go. Second round three. action now. The United States, after seven bouts, leading the Soviet Union 4-3 in this dual meet. By the way, it's the first of two dual meets this week. As these teams will be going to Buffalo, I say these teams, it will actually be an entirely different dozen fighters for the American team. Six of the Soviets will also fight in Buffalo on Tuesday, along with six others who come along. They brought 18 fighters to the United States on this trip. The left-hander Bernard Price against Lernik Papion of the Soviet Union. Second round. Just about even a scoring in amateur boxing, 20-point must system. 20 points to the winner of a round, 19 or less to the loser. Standing eight count can be issued by the referee. Three standing eight counts in one bout, and we already had that earlier today. Results in a victory. difficult off times to discern just what they were looking at as opposed to what the average fan might be looking at. As it affect it's boxing skills that should matter most of all. You know the story about amateur boxing, a good straight jab is worth as much as a knockdown punch, in theory anyway. Halfway through the second round. as well. It used to be optional until the Olympic Games. In fact, the headgear is optional for the Soviet team in this beam. And in one of the earlier fights, Vitaly Kajanovsky, the light heavyweight, opted not to use it. The American team must wear the headgear at all times. Live action from Reno, Nevada, which hopes to become a hotbed of both amateur and professional boxing. Much anticipated dual meet between the U.S. and the Soviet Union taking place in the city in which they posted the United States against Cuba in dual meets in prior years. Under 30 seconds remaining in the second round in a close fight. Nobody has really assumed command as the second round winds down. A little combination there by Price, who tries to get inside again. Hoppy unable to stave him off, though. End of the second round is at hand. Third and final round. U.S.-Russia dual meet coming to you from Reno, Nevada. That's Bernard Price, blue top for the United States, and Lernik Papian of the Soviet Union. This appears to have the makings of one of those bouts if it goes all the way, since nobody's really assumed command, in which the U.S. judge would go for his man, the Soviet judge would go for his man, and it will be up to the Mexican judge to determine the winner. Very close fight. has done a lot of scoring. They've been active in terms of foot speed, movement, and all of that. But they really have not been uh, very many damaging blows. Price trying to come in with that right jab and then follow it, but Papion is there exhibiting very good defensive skills. Again, that lunging left this time by Price. There's a little right hand to the side of the head. Price trying to get in with a combination. There's a good left hand that got inside. So Price seeking that opening and found one. Was able to get that left hand inside. Another left by Price. Papion comes back with a soft left. Price still 
Mitchell moving very well here in the third round. Halfway through the third round, again, an American referee, but he has no voice in the scoring. Carmen Williamson from Toledo, Ohio. This becomes a very key decision for the U.S. Under a half minute remaining in the fight. Two have grown weary, wearier here in the third, and there is a caution. An obvious illegal blow to the back of the head. A caution, though, no point deduction. You get a caution, and then a warning would result in a point deduction. Ten seconds remaining in the third round. We would give this round to Price, and I would suspect he'd win it basis of what he has done here in the third round. That is the end of the fight, and we'll be coming back for the decision in a moment. We're ready now. Here's the decision at 112 pounds. Winner on points, out of the blue corner, from the United States of America. Well, a close fight, and I think he won it in the third round. It was Bernard Price, two judges voting for Price, and one, as we suspected, for the Soviet fighter, so it did come down to the decision of the Mexican judge as Bernard Price gives the United States a 5-3 to three lead. We're going to move Bernard into position here in a moment and get a word with him. A very big victory for the United States right there. That's four straight wins for the American boxers, and Bernard has now joined me. Congratulations, Bernard. The way I saw it, it looked like the third round did it for you. How'd you feel going into that third round? Well, I was a little tired going into the third round, so I just planned the boxing, worked my jab, catching coming in, combination after the jab. Was he about what you expected in terms of caliber of opposition? Yeah, he was. He came just like I thought he would. So I just mainly boxed him side to side, try to stay off the road. What's the feeling back there right now in the dressing room? You guys were down three to one and now lead five to three. What's everybody talking about? Well, all the last five or six, all they could think about was going out there to win. It was on us. You think the U.S. team could pick up two more wins? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Oh. We're in good shape. I think we're in better shape than the Soviet Union. Congratulations, Steve Bernard. Very, very nice. Okay. Thanks okay. A lot. So, Bernard Price wins, U.S. leads 5-3, to three, four bouts to go, and 119 pounds bantamweight division coming up. The Yacheslav Shalepka of the Soviet Union against Eugene Speed of the United States. Speed is out of Sugar Ray Leonard's hometown, Palmer Park, Maryland. He is trained and coached by Dave Jacobs, and there is the Soviet opponent, Vyacheslav Shalepka, 25 years old, has considerably more experience than does Speed, who is 21. 5 feet 7 is Speed. Knows Leonard, has been encouraged by Leonard. And as we say, he's coached by Dave Jacobs back in Palmer Park. And Jacobs, in fact, is the American team coach for this beat. So Speed feels right at home. 119 pounds, the Bantamweight class. U.S. team, for the most part, not really knowing a whole lot about the Soviet fighters. Not that uh, the Soviets are unknown, but you got to remember that this American contingent did not have the opportunity, for the most part, to engage in international competition to see these Soviet fighters in action in prior years. Americans would clinch no worse than a tie in this dual meet with a victory here. And as we say, when you get down to the heavyweight and super heavyweight fights, the last two fights, the Soviets would be heavily favored to win both. So 
these next two bouts are extremely significant for the U.S. team. Darren Allen will be taking on Valeri Lapdev in our next bout. First round action here, Eugene Speed from Palmer Park, Maryland, Vyacheslav Shalefka from Dmitrovgrad in the Soviet Union. Shalefko has been the more aggressive through the first half of this first round, a minute and a half remaining now in round one. trying to pour in. through the first half of the round. A little right hand got inside. He had done some damage with a prior combination. And Eugene Speed, just 21 years old, in only his second international competition, Keith Les Fabry at the U.S. Nationals in November to win the gold there. Ten of the 12 national champions are in action today. The USA chant begins anew at the Reno Sparks Convention Center here in Nevada. And the United States has just reeled off five consecutive victories to assume a 6-3 lead and clinch no worse than a tie for the dual meet title. Three bats remain, and the official announcement being made Ladies right now in the, in the center of the ring. pound division, at the time, 2 minutes, 28 seconds into round number one. Winner by knockout in the blue corner, Eugene Speed of the United States of America. Eugene Speed, the winner. Well, we'll be back in a moment. The fellas this week having a chance to enjoy one of the great vintage car cars. Eugene Speed, who has just given the United States a 6-3 to three lead. Was that your plan, to go in and, and try to end it really early? No, that wasn't my plan. Uh, my plan was to go out there and box him and use my reach, height, and my speed. How did you feel about the first half of the first round when it looked like he was quite aggressive? Yeah, he was, but uh, I wasn't. I didn't warm up in the back good as I should have. Uh, it took me a while to get my range on him. After that, I hit him with the right hand and it was over with. There's no question about that. We're going to take a look at a replay of the end of this. Uh, sure. As it turns out, you can take us through it right here. Yeah. In that left hand right there. Boom. Here it yeah. comes. Right, right. And I guess at that point, you've got to figure he's not going to get up off the deck the way, the way it looked. Now, when, when this team was down three bouts to one after four, you were in the back and, and watching. And uh, were the fellas discouraged at that point about what was going on? A little bit because they got the edge. They got the start. They, they started out, which we expected from them to start out in a uh, very fast pace and take the lead. I was mentioning before that sometimes it's difficult to predict what's going to happen. Uh, 1988 is a long way away, but as you look uh, into your crystal ball, do you hope to be an amateur boxer in 88 and a part of the U.S. team? Right now, and I'm definitely looking forward to 88, but uh, who knows 
year or two. Well, the main thing is just to keep motivated. Keep winning and keep my motivation, and I'll be there at 88. Very impressive okay. today. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Okay. Eugene Speed, the winner. And so the United States, after nine bouts on top by a score of six to three, one more victory would clinch it. So the Soviets would need to win the next three to wind up in a 6-6 tie. And again, as we say, in the heavyweight and super heavyweight fights, they figure to win. So this becomes a big one for Darren Allen and the U.S. team as he gets set to take on that man, Valeri Laktov, at the age of 25. Darren Allen. And Darren Allen out of Columbus, Ohio. This is the light middleweight division, 156 pounds. Darren Allen, born, lives in Columbus, Ohio. Fights uh, for the Ohio Youth Club. He's been boxing for 10 years. 20 years old. Needs to work on his combinations more. That's what, what he has been stressing in his training for this confrontation. also been prone in the past to back up. And that's another thing they have been working on. Again, he's a, a relatively inexperienced fighter, even though he is 20 years old. He's been boxing for 10 years. He has very little high-class experience. Last year, he lost to Dennis Milton in the quarterfinals of the Olympic trials. People were surprised he didn't get that far. That's the first time people really sat up and took notice of Darren Allen. Amateur championships, he lost to Alfonso Bailey, so he is one of the two Americans involved in this competition here in Reno that were not gold medalists at the national championships in November. With Laptev, who is 25 years old and has been around and has had a lot of international experience. In fact, Laptev fought in the U.S. Soviet dual meet. Soviet Union last year beating Danny Trujillo. Minute and a half left in round one. against the world in amateur boxing series. We saw the United States, a different aggregation, facing Argentina in Longview, Texas, a couple of weeks back, and looking quite impressive there. And upcoming will be dual meets against Ireland next week and Korea in two weeks. Slowly paced, first round, half a minute to go. The experienced Soviet laptop against the relatively inexperienced American, Darren Allen. First round, not much action in it. Coming to a close. Coming to you live from Reno, Nevada, Al Michaels with you from ringside. The United States leading the Soviet Union, six bouts to three. This is the second round with Darren Allen of the United States taking on Valeria Lakta of the Soviet Union. Again, uh, and we'll stress what we pointed out at the outset of the telecast, the dual meets between these two countries began in 1969. And over that period, the Soviets have won 26, the U.S. just six. favored coming in here. Remember, this is an experienced team featuring several fighters who would have been on their Olympic team against a very green and inexperienced U.S. unit, none of whom were on the Olympic team in Los Angeles. And the United States, after falling behind 3-1, to one, has now taken a 6-3 to three lead. Three bounce to go, including the 
of the official decision. Coming up, six to four is our score. The U.S. on top. Referee Dick McGuire, the Here American from the Bronx. Knockout in one minute, 27 seconds in round number two. Out of the red corner, representing the Soviet Union, Valery Loftev. Valery Loftev. Winning it with a second round knockout. So the heavyweight and super heavyweight confrontations to come. Again, it was an inactive first round. A little right and then another right hand. And there's that left hand. And that did it. That was the end right there. Face down goes Allen. Down for the count. And it's now 6-4 to four in favor of the American unit. And we'll return to Reno with more boxing. Another look now at the replay. Last bout. Ending in a big, big hurry. Again, Laptev, that little right jab. Allen starts to work his way forward, and then that left hand, boom. Side of the jaw. And down goes Allen as Laptev, the experienced Soviet light middleweight, wins it. So after 10 bouts, 10 of the 12 complete, the United States leading the Soviet Union by a score of 6-4 to four with both the heavyweight and super heavyweight confrontations yet to come. So those bouts will be upcoming very shortly, but the, the Soviet team arriving here about a week and a half ago in this country, and let's take a look at some of the things they've been doing. 22 hours and five airports later, the Soviet boxing team arrived in Colorado Springs 10 days ago. The purpose was to train alongside the American team at the United States Olympic training facilities. Despite the obvious barriers, the teams seemed to enjoy living and training in such close proximity. It was an unspoken respect and a feeling that this event was not just another boxing match, but another step in a competition that has become traditional, a tradition that has spanned 17 years and 34 matches, one that Soviet head coach Artem Lavrov hopes will continue. Well, uh, this is always, it's always a pleasure for us both to be here and to host American team at home. And you know that uh, our meet has a great tradition and uh, furthermore, this is uh, one of the unique uh, meets which never stops. It has uh, never been interrupted, this tradition. And I even feel that maybe we contribute a little, we contribute by our non-stopping um, traditional meets to the softening of the whole tension. 
last Sunday, when most of America was anxiously awaiting a football game, many of the Soviet team members were also glued to the screen, but it was prior to the spectacle in Palo Alto. They were watching the American Olympic boxing medalists who've turned pro competing in Atlantic City. Some had to be thinking about the frustration of being unable to compete in the 1984 Olympics, the same frustration felt by the American boxers in 1980. As boxing gave way to football, the scene was like many across the country. There was pizza, cheers, and high fives among the American boxers. You wonder what the Soviet boxers thought when they found out a football game had delayed the presidential inauguration ceremonies. The warmth they had felt since first arriving in the States continued when the Soviet team flew to Reno Tuesday. They were greeted by politicians and proclamations. And yes, the Girl Scouts were there as well, exchanging not only gifts, but expressions of friendship. And that Soviet team will be leaving here tomorrow. They'll proceed to Buffalo, and on Tuesday in Buffalo, they'll be taking on another U.S. aggregation. So two bats to go here in Reno, Nevada, with the United States leading 6-4. to four. We're back live in Reno. Without sounding jingoistic, it is a pretty good accomplishment for the American team because the Soviets were, were very heavily favored, far more experienced. The U.S. a very green unit, and it, uh, it had the makings of turning out that way early on when the Soviet Union won three of the first four bouts today. But the American team came back to win five in a row to uh, clinch no worse than a tie to lead six to three. And, of course, the Soviets just won the last fight with two to go six to four. We have a moment. We're going to go back and look at a great action fight that took place before we came on the air featuring Percy Harris of the United States against Cecilbeck Kilimov of the Soviet Union, 165-pound division. This turned out to be the sixth bout here in Reno today. The Soviets were leading at this particular point three bouts to two in this second round action. The first round, we had scored slightly in favor of the Soviet fighter, Kalimov. And this one really got the crowd stirred up. Percy Harris from Baltimore. A man with not a whole lot of international experience. Young, he's just 21 years old. And the type of fellow that if he can exhibit the skills that he exhibited uh, here today is a man to be reckoned with in the future as they figure to work with him and his skills should improve considerably over the next couple of years if he indeed remains in the program. Kalimov was able to come in with a left hand that staggered him momentarily. That's in an earlier bout with the Soviets, at least on our card, having won the first round. Slight margin. You're not hearing the natural sound from the fight as we're having an audio problem with that at the moment, but you saw that right hand really come in from Kilimov. And another right hand. And Harris appeared to be in some trouble at this point with a minute and 15 seconds remaining in that second round. But Harris able to weather that storm. Tried to stick that jab in there, but as you can see at that point, the blows from Kalimov had taken their toll, and back he came with another combination. Harris was able to hang right in there, but there wasn't a whole lot of sting to whatever he was throwing in the second round. And all of a sudden, then with a left and a right and he had Kalimov backed up against the rows but Kalimov was able to come back with that left hand and escape from the corner so good action in the second round of the earlier fight as then Harris all of a sudden his punches with some sting to them and Kalimov in trouble against the ropes in the second round stepping in to caution Harris who acknowledges it and then Harris goes right back to work trying an uppercut right there as the second round in this earlier bout came to an end
earlier, third round action between Percy Harris of the United States, who came on very strongly at the end of the second round, and his opponent at 165 pounds, Asilbek Kalimov of the Soviet Union. The two slugging it out early in the third round. Another good right hand delivered there by Percy Harris. Kalimov showing movement to his left, but again absorbing the blow. Harris seeking the end of the fight, trying to deliver the, the blow that could end it with one punch. As he was measuring him, again, the right hand coming in over the top. Kalimov obviously fatigued at this point. Blood flowing down from the right nostril of Kalimov, that right uppercut missing. But the damage still being done by Harris. And Harris working on the head, getting his punches in penetrating the defense. So a big win and an impressive and an exciting win for Harris. Again, as we are back live, it's the United States leading the Soviet Union 6-4. to four, And we'll live Reno, Nevada, U.S. against the world in amateur boxing. USA 6, Soviet Union 4 with two bouts to go. The heavyweight and the super heavyweight confrontations coming up at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. And also coming up, except on the West Coast, where by the time you hear these words uttered, that game will be history. But it will be the AFC-NFC Pro Bowl as part of ABC's Wide World of Sports from Honolulu at 4 o'clock Eastern time. The Pro Bowl coming up following boxing. So, at 201 pounds now, Alexander Yagubkin, the very popular and experienced Soviet heavyweight. In fact, he was the first Soviet heavyweight to win a world championship, and he's quite proud of that fact. He won it a couple of years back in 1982, and James Pritchard of the United States, who really has his work cut out for him now. Pritchard, 23 years old. This is only his second international bout. 
He's been working on a number of things preparatory to this one. Pretty good sized height advantage here for Yakupkin, who comes out active here in the first round. Soviets can get no better than a tie, and they would be favored to do that. Because they're favored to win this fight, and they're favored to win the next one, the super heavyweight confrontation. It's the 11th of 12 bouts in Reno. Richard, with some international experience in the USA Poland dual meet last year in Poland in October of 84, where he lost on points to Zarankowicz of Poland. Again, the 
Goodkin has really not landed a particularly effective blow in the first two rounds. He's been throwing punches, but good defensive skills being exhibited by Pritchard. And he's been carrying the fight, has Pritchard. in the scoring. You have a Soviet judge, an American judge, and a Mexican judge. 20-point must system, third and final round. I mentioned it was Plow. It was actually James Dooley, his own coach, who was the man who was issuing the instructions in the corner between rounds to Pritchard. Soviet referee Vladimir Gordienko. This, this could be another of, of those fights where it figures that the Mexican judge is going to be the key. As we said before, in a close bout, normally the American judge goes with the American, the Soviet judge goes with the Soviet. We say that in a historical sense, it's the way it's been in, for the most part in past dual meet competitions. That's the neutral judge. In this case, the judge from Mexico, who oftentimes is the key. That's why you have so many decisions that wind up two to one. And that's been the case today. Richard trying to smother you, Gupkin, not giving him any room. Keeping inside the USA champ along with a foot stopping here at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. Again, this would be a major upset, both individually for Pritchard and certainly in a team sense for the Americans. 120 remaining in the third and final round. This is one of those fights, if you had it up on the board here in a sports book in a Nevada casino, it would have been off the board. That's how much Yagubkin would have been favored by, and he's able to come in with that good right. That's why you've got to be careful, because Yagubkin could end this thing with one punch, and he very nearly did it right there. He hit him with that right hand as Pritchard was coming in, and Pritchard was stung by it. Pritchard could still be hurt. He's trying to hold on. Buying time here. all the way, it's going to be a very interesting decision. Yagubkin exerting himself and here in the third round showing a 
that he had perhaps a little bit more stamina. And I would give the third round to Yagupkin after giving the second round to Pritchard. And the first round was extremely close. In any event, win or lose, Mr. Pritchard gave a very good account of himself. Far better than I think anybody here had anticipated. So, in just a moment, we'll be coming back with the decision. At 201 pounds, the heavyweight division. We're ready now for the decision. If Pritchard Ladies wins, the U.S. wins as a team. The heavyweight division, the winner on points in the red corner, Alexander Yagutkin, representing the Soviet Union. Well, you knew it was going to be a close decision. There was no question about that. And Yagutkin, I would think, on the strength of that third round, and by the way, the decision is 2-1, to one. American judge that determined it. The American judge had Pritchard ahead. The Soviet judge had Yagupkin ahead. And the Mexican judge gave it to Yagupkin. And again, you would think on the strength of coming on in the third round, and perhaps he gave him the first round as well, because it appeared that Pritchard had the second round won handily. So the United States now leads six to five. But it was a tremendous performance for a man who figured to be so totally outclassed. And James Pritchard is going to join us here. And I know you've got to be, James, extremely disappointed in that decision. But you really gave a great account of yourself. Did you think you'd won that fight? I think I beat him. He beat me, he beat me in the first round. But in the second round, he couldn't take the pressure. Third round, I brought it on a little bit more. You gave, know. you gave him round one. And then you figured round, round two for you. You That's won round two. Up. There's no question about yeah. that. The other two rounds, he scored a little bit, but he didn't score the way the people say he did. It looked like he st he stung you a little bit uh, in the third round with about 45 seconds to go. No, you. never. He stung me early in the second round, but that was all. I got I got Carlos coming with him with, with the first two or three uh, minutes in the first round, but he didn't he didn't do anything convincing. Let me ask you a question. In light of the fact this is a, an extremely tough opponent, I would think the, the toughest you've ever faced. Is it as good a fight as you have fought in your life? He's not tough. He's fought all the guys I fought and beat. The gold medal one, he fought him. I fought him in the trials and beat him. I don't know. It's, it's one of them things, you know, they behind on points, behind on fights. And we knew it was going to be tough on me and the super heavy. So, you know, it's just one of them things. When you're in that, ten, in weight, in that weight class, you... It tends to have, you know, fall back on it, you know. I, it's yeah. tough. I know you have to be disappointed. Let me just ask you basically, because you're going to be 24 years old pretty soon. Do you anticipate staying around through the Olympics in 88? I don't really know at this point. I can't, I can't, you know, I can't say anything uh, negative or positive about this situation at this time. Just kind of disappointed about the decision. Tried so hard, I, I trained so hard for this fight. For people to come and do it like this is... It's kind of rough. Yep, I understand. You've got nothing to be ashamed of, though. Well of a fight for you, James. Thank, Thank you. A disappointed James Pritchard. And by the way, we are, are now being told that the U.S. and Soviet judges both voted for the Soviet and the Mexican judge. As we look at the cards now, the Mexican judge voted for Pritchard. So you can't say uh, <laughs> it was a victory that uh, was determined by the Mexican judge, which we had originally surmised and understood to be true. It was the Mexican judge voting for Pritchard, and Dick McGuire, the American judge, had Yagubkin as the winner. Now we go to the super heavyweight classification. Valery Abadzan of the Soviet Union against Nathaniel Fitch of the United States. And again, you've got a, a case here where the Soviet has a good deal more experience. Fitch has been around for a while. He is 28 years old. He's the oldest American on this team, but really has done nothing of a spectacular nature in international competition. And in fact, plans to retire from amateur boxing shortly. But for the moment, he is in here because he was the national champion, having defeated Alfred Slep on a third round knockout at the U.S. Nationals in Indianapolis in November. Valerie Abudzan from Kudia in the Soviet Union. Abudzan lost to Teofilo Stevenson in the Tournament of Friendship. Those were the games that were.
were held in Cuba right after the Los Angeles Olympics. And he gave Stevenson a great battle. Matias Pino won it. That will be scored as a slip or a, <laughs> a throwdown, if, if you will, as Nathaniel Fitch goes to the deck. And a caution is issued to Abuzan. Again, Abuzan with a victory would clinch a tie for the Soviets. This one would wind up at a tie. For the victory here, Fitch would win it for the Americans.
United States with 15 seconds remaining in the second round. Fetch appears to be innervated. And that's the end of the second round. So for late tuners in, the United States won the first bout today. James Harris was the winner. And in the six bouts, the Soviets then won the next three. The U.S. reeled off five consecutive victories to go up 6-3. But the Soviets have now won two straight and are seeking a third consecutive win to wind up in a tie. U.S. team not expected to be nearly this far coming in. These are among the best fighters in the Soviet Union, whereas as far as the American team is concerned, it's a green unit, and they're really trying to assemble what they consider to be the best team, but as we said early on, it's more of an aggregation than a team itself. Here we go, third and final round. on clearly ahead at this point. So Fitch, we would figure, would need a giant round or a knockout. The referee coming in to readjust the red band on the glove of Abuzan, denoting he is fighting out of the red corner. decision in the super heavyweight class that fight just hey, ending and here's the announcement the super heavyweight division out of the red corner representing the soviet union Valery 
Abadjian. No surprise as the Soviets win the final three bouts, come from behind and gain a tie. As this one winds up 6-6. And just to follow up, remember that Yagubkin Pritchard fight, the key fight, the next to last fight in the heavyweight class, talking about the scoring in that one. Just looking at the cards, the United States Judge McGuire gave Yagubkin a one-point victory, 59-58. The Soviet judge gave Yagubkin a two-point win, 60 to 58. The Mexican judge actually gave the American Pritchard a two-point win, 59 to 57. But both the American and Soviet judge gave Yagubkin that last round. The Mexican judge gave it to Pritchard. That was a close and very interesting and very. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco, boxing is just ahead. WBA junior lightweight champion Rocky Lockridge defending against Kamel Bu Ali. How do you see it? Small ring, 16 foot square, a champion who can really punch, and a challenger who, if he's not at his best, is.